The Foreigner is Steven Seagal's big comeback movie where he finally gave his fans what they wanted the most. Schoolgirls. What the f***? No. God damn it. You know what? It's sh It's just complete sh it starts off with Seagal watching his granddaughter change. She then f***s off and dies or something because she's never mentioned again. Seagal then goes to meet with Jeff Bezos in Paris, who needs Seagal for one final mission. I want you to pick up a package and deliver it to Germany. The patron's address is on the back. It sounds simple, but it's a gall, so you know it's gonna be a cluster f To make sure everything goes as terribly as possible, they send a slightly less annoying Pete Davidson to go along with him. How long ago, Sai? We'll be in Versailles when the car stops. I'm not even going to acknowledge whatever that was that dubbed Seagal's voice there. How long ago, Sai? They go to the pickup spot to retrieve the package from these guys. What is it? Your tongues are cut out. They just move on like that's normal shit and not crazy as fuck. Is that the package? Of course it's the package. And why are you asking them questions when you know they can't talk? I think this may be it. Oh my God, no shit, thick Tracy. Luckily, Seagal's stroke is interrupted by this random gunfight. Seagal does his trademark not looking where he's shooting move and literally kills all the bad guys on accident. Then, after burning down this poor old lady's house, he confuses the f out of her by asking if she'd do the same for him. For me. Relax, lady. It's a Seagal movie. They just put the lines in the wrong order. Okay. Go over to this farmhouse with the lights right here. And I'm pretty sure saying okay was supposed to be her line and not Seagal's. Just get your for me. Okay. Go over to this farmhouse with the lights right here. But whatever. That shit happens all the time, so deal with it. Anyways. Grandma and the dead body can get fucked, cause we're out. <laughs> On the way back, while Seagal's doing figure eights, Pete wants to open the package. You don't wanna do that. But Seagal knows his movies well enough to know that whatever's in there is really fucking stupid, and it's better to save that disappointment for later. If you touch it again, I will blow your two inch dick off. They confront Bezos over that whole ambush thing. F***ing ambush. Three, four of them. And Seagal shows off his ventriloquism trick. Talk to my friend. Before telling him he's never working for him again. Find yourself a new delivery boy. He then asks Seagal to work for him again. Will you deliver the package to the agreed address? And he tells him sure thing. Okay. But first, he has to make a quick stop in Poland for his dad's funeral, and this guy meets him at the terminal with a very special gift. Badly photoshopped pictures of himself. Since himself is what he loves the most, things are going great until this jackass says the most f***ed up thing you will ever hear. I beg your pardon. Oh, hell no. Not even the cameraman can believe that vulgarity and start seizing while Seagal throws him, crippling him for life. <laughs> your pardon, bitch. Back at his hotel room, Seagal discovers he's being spied on by this very covert van that's parked facing the wrong way right outside his window. Schoolgirls. I don't think so. I'm pretty sure they're spies. Bezos wants Pete to come see him. My kid wants to see you right now. So he kills the messengers. <laughs> and then sneaks into the house 
and executes the fucking maid <laughs> for absolutely no reason. Bezos tries to hire Pete for another job. I have an errand in Mallorca and need someone I can trust. But Pete kills him too. Again, for no reason. Seagal then calls the client to deliver the package. Hello? Yes, yeah, your daddy in. Mommy? Are you serious? I don't care that she's only five years old. Not knowing mommy from daddy is really goddamn stupid. And why can you see through her head here? What the fuck is even happening? Now, the guy who gave Seagal those stupid pictures hires Shaft to kill Seagal. I want you to eliminate Mr. Cold. For reasons that are never made clear. We then see what Seagal's up to, and this movie just took a very dark turn. Schoolgirls. Anyways, the client's wife wants to pick up the package, so Seagal sends his body double instead. Thank you again for meeting me, Mr. Weber. And you can't even tell. It turns out the package was fake too, and the real Seagal is back at his hotel, waddling through the room as slowly as humanly possible when this guy magically appears right behind him. He then seems to think he's in f***ing snatch or something. Feel that sharp pain in the back of your neck. Instead of a Seagal movie. You seem to have taken an active interest in my employer. Where emotion and personality are frowned upon. What I am or am not is inconsequential to this moment. Seagal agrees to take him to the real package. Deception begets deception begets deception, Mr. Weber. If he'll just stop overacting. Lovely. They head to the bus station, and after some supersonic waddling, you fucking rock! they retrieve the package. Since he's a gentleman first, he accompanies Seagal to the bathroom, which is sweet, but he really needs to bring it down a notch. Easy. Easy. What the hell does easy mean when it comes to pissing? In a crazy twist, the second package was also fake and a f***ing bomb, and Seagal shows his cat-like agility as he flies through a window that he really shouldn't be able to fit through. And holy f that is a massive explosion. All it had to do was kill whoever opened it. But now the entire bus station is dead. Shaft also just happens to stay at the exact same hotel as Seagal and does the very clever thing of checking in under Seagal's name. Mr. Colt. And would you prefer two single beds or one double? One double should be plenty, dear. If you're wondering how that's supposed to work, it doesn't, and it's really fucking stupid. Now, Seagal decides to break into the client's home, but it's fully gated with monitored surveillance and crawling with security guards armed with rifles. So he shows off his incredible spy skills by having his body double climb over a waist-high gate that is completely unguarded. He then just starts executing everyone. Remember, these are all innocent people who are just protecting a family. After massacring countless good men who are just trying to provide for their families, he makes it to the wife and does the most Seagal thing possible. Spies on her while she takes a bath. Do you know who I am? He then explains to her what's going on. But I was hired to deliver the package to your husband, not you. First, you could have said that in the first place and saved numerous lives. Second, 
That's complete bullshit. He was only given an address. Patron's address is on the back. Never a f***ing name. But whatever. Remember, Pete? You'll never guess where he's staying. Apparently, it's the only hotel in all of Berlin. And because everyone's just killing everyone for no f***ing reason, he executes the receptionist. <laughs> then he goes upstairs to Shaft's room because he checked in a cigar for reasons that still make no sense. And I swear to God, everyone in this movie is so bad at what they do. This guy didn't even rack a round until the guy trying to kill him has two guns pointed at him and even stops to quote Dirty Harry. Feeling lucky? This guy just stands there through all of that instead of pulling either of the triggers. And this dumb bitch gave him a single bed when he clearly asked for a double. And would you prefer two single beds or one double? One double should be plenty, dear. So, Pete gets shot three times with a shotgun, then falls head first from the second story. We've definitely seen the last of him. Now, Shaft is looking for Seagal's Mercedes. Silver Mercedes, FB5288. That has never been seen or mentioned until right now. And since the writing in this movie is f***ing garbage, it drives by at that exact moment. But surprise, it's not Seagal. It's someone who dresses exactly like him and who he traded cars with earlier. We, we traded cars. In Seagal's mind, trading your car for a complete stranger's rental is a totally normal thing to do. Since this isn't the guy he's looking for, he, of course, f***ing kills him. Which I completely agree with. Finally, the police show up to arrest all of them so the mass murders can finally stop. Just kidding, they're completely f***ing worthless. All of the evidence is here, except no body. I know where you could find a body. In the f***ing reception of the f***ing hotel. That's right in front of you. Nothing ever comes of this, and we never see or hear about the police again. Now, Seagal opens the real package, and it's a shitty newspaper where the headline is about a plane crash, but the story itself is two repeating paragraphs about the royal family. I swear to God, those fucking Brits will find any excuse to talk about that stupid family. The rest of the world doesn't give a shit. There's also some keys and an airplane black box, but I'm pretty sure what they're after is that stupid newspaper. Or maybe this disc with silly putty on it. Better save that for later. So the movie's putting in as much effort as Seagal now, and Shaft is just suddenly holding Seagal at gunpoint. No setup, no context. One second, Seagal's on the phone, and now we're here. The movie also forgets that we just fucking did this and Seagal's going to lead someone to the real package again. They also don't show it, but since she's minding her own business and not bothering anyone, I'm pretty sure they killed her on their way out. At this point, the movie just keeps repeating itself, so I'm going to speed through it as fast as I can. This whole thing was obviously a setup, and after slapping the sh out of him like a 14 year old girl. Yes, that whole fight scene was the same double chop move played multiple times. So he grabs the putty disc and either throws it so hard that it goes right through his stomach or he fucking ate it. But either way, it's inside his body 
and explodes with so much force that he actually turns white. Then Pete shows up again old friend. and is immediately taken out. <laughs> again, right as Seagal leaves, the CIA shows up and blows up the abandoned building. Why they do that is never explained. I'm guessing they had a shot of this explosion. And couldn't figure out how to work it in. Now we get to find out why the package is so important. I know what they did and I know why they did it. Her husband and picture guy were up to some shady sh**. She had an affair with this guy who was on his way to expose it, but they blew up his plane before he could. The package is a part of that evidence along with the keys to all sorts of incriminating documents. It's really impressive how he was able to put together those newspaper clippings and black box of a plane crash that he died in. I said I'm speeding through this, so let's just move on. In the middle of all of this, he makes time to go to Poland again to have dinner with his brother. But they spot the CIA, and with the walls closing in on them, they do some Jason Bourne shit by just getting up and walking out. We lost them. Now we find out the real reason he was released from Soviet prison. He you tried to negotiate your way out by giving up dad's name to the f***ing KGB? If you're confused, that's because literally none of this has ever been mentioned at any point. He's playing you to get to me. Then you tell me what happened. He never actually answers, and I'm moving on. Seagal confronts Picture Guy, and even though he kills him... It's not before we get some more really confusing shit. You really think after 16 years that little episode will come home to roost? 16 years? That would mean she was having an affair at like 12 years old. You know what? F*** it. Pete is back again, and since they haven't killed any innocent people recently, they're starting to get urges. What are you gonna do? Pull the trigger? So they decide to team up. There's an army of them in there. It's impossible to get in alone. Remember that part of the gate that was really easy to climb over and led to the deaths of the entire staff? Well, there's still nobody guarding it and they hop right over. Now they're in position, but Pete doesn't want to take the shots. Probably because this stupid rope is blocking the f***ing scope. But Seagal doesn't look where he's shooting anyways, so he was born for this. He takes out all the guards with no problem and even has time to retie the rope between shots. When they're done fulfilling their bloodlust, they go inside and in a shocking twist, so Seagal's voice double says some stupid shit. That wasn't very nice, but then again, one good turn deserves another. And shoots him right in the Kevlar vest, and I'm sure we won't see him again. We finally meet the husband, who actually wants to see Seagal. It's a pleasure to meet you, finally. Which means all he had to do was ring the fucking bell. But then again, this guy and whatever the f kind of mustache that is. Something as terrible as that. He says his wife is a liar. She is a deeply troubled woman. But we all stopped caring a long time ago and just want this to end. Then in a shocking twist, Pete's back and kills the husband. <laughs> the wife found the documents that will expose her husband and picture guy, but they're both fucking dead, so why is this still happening? The only thing that makes sense is Seagal wanted to show everyone how he can shoot a shotgun 
without even touching the trigger. That makes him so happy, he actually starts to frolic. And the final fuck you of this movie is Pete is back again. It was the least I could do. They fight, and I have no idea what's even happening before Seagal gives him a judo chop. And the scene just ends. The wife left him a note, but you know what? I don't fucking care. The movie's over. Go fuck yourself. <laughs>